Madaya, welcome back to Baking 101 on Cucina Maria. <laughs> Cucina Maria. Madaya, Madaya, welcome Baking 101. This is my April. Why did I miss it? It's just in the middle. Madaya, this is officially. <clears throat> I don't know what I did that, but yeah. Madayao, I'm Ria Jose, and this is episode 1 of Baking 101 at Casino Maria on Just Alive TV. If you watched episode 0, thank you very much. If you haven't watched episode 0, the link will be up here and in the description box down below. This is officially episode 1 and episode 1 is all about basic baking tools and equipment. I'm wearing a different thing and the setup is very different from the teaser that was shown in episode 0 because I was not satisfied with what I had filmed earlier. I'm redoing this entire thing. This might seem overwhelming to you guys, but what I'm trying to do here is show you as many tools and equipment as I can that any beginner baker might want to have or need. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that you should have each and every one of these, but I would just like to explain to you what this equipment and tools are for so that you can decide for yourself if you need to buy this. First off, this is my full apron so it has a pocket. Over here is a towel holder. When you're baking, especially if you're a newbie, I highly recommend wearing an apron. I had this made by Aprons Davao. I actually prefer half aprons but this time I'm wearing a full apron. When you're baking, it's recommended that you wear a full apron and when you're cooking, you can just wear the half apron. Because when you're baking, you know, um, mas likely na magtalsik yung mga flour and everything. But whatever, it's more comfortable for you guys. For me, mas comfortable ang half apron. But I really love this. Wala lang, it's so cute. I look so cute, diba? Thank you, Apron Davao, for making this for me. Now, if you're wondering where Bake World and Baker's Basket are and the other establishments that I'm gonna mention, everything will be in the description box down below. These are all Davao stores. I'd like to start with the basic tools that anybody has to have. For me, the most important and the basic ones are the measuring instruments or the measuring tools. You might be familiar with some of these already. I'm sure you've seen these either in other baking videos or in the department store, in the kitchens, or baking supply store. These three are the basics. You have your measuring cup. This type of measuring cup is used to measure liquids. Now, if you're wondering why it does not look round, naubusan kasi ako ng round, but later on, I'll show you something else. I got this from Daiso. This was only 88 pesos. See? Daiso. If you are just trying to bake or it's your first time to bake, there are a lot of really nice, very cute, and affordable baking and cooking tools at Daiso. This two naman, I got this from Bake World. This type of measuring cup and spoon set, we usually use it for dry ingredients. This one for wet ingredients. If you're measuring milk, cream, honey, you use this type of measuring cup. But if you're measuring flour, sugar, you use this type of measuring cup. Measurements here are one cup, one half cup, one third cup, one fourth cup, one tablespoon, and one half tablespoon. This is good for most of the dry ingredients that we need in larger quantities of. But if you need a more accurate measurement, you use the ones that are like this. So this one man has six pieces. These measuring cups I got from Bake World. If you can afford or if you have access to stainless steel ones, that would be my recommended ones. But these cheaper ones, which are plastic, are also really good. The quantities of this one is one tablespoon, one half tablespoon, one teaspoon, one half teaspoon, and one fourth teaspoon, and one eighth teaspoon. So, ito usually for salt, vanilla extract, spices, and herbs. Ito yung ginagamit natin. And then this one, the larger ones, are usually for flour, sugar, cornstarch. If you want more accurate measurement, I have here digital or electronic scales. So the first one is an electronic kitchen scale. Now you might think you don't really need this because you're not a professional. I can't say that this is a practical buy for people who are just baking like once a month or once a week for themselves or their family. 
but this is highly recommended if you are baking bread. Usually when you're baking bread, you have to weigh in grams. You might notice hindi siya naka on because when I'm storing this, I don't leave the battery on. This is actually a general tip. If you leave the batteries on a gadget for a while and nag-leak yun, nasisira yung gadget nyo and that would be very difficult to discard properly. I was looking for a measuring cup but they said they don't have measuring cups. Hindi pa dumarating yung shipment nila. But they told me that they have a digital jug. I'm very excited. This is expensive. This is actually not a necessity for me but I got very excited because I've been wanting to have one. This is 700 pesos and ang cute guys, it's purple. Aside from measuring the weight of your liquid, it can also measure the volume. The volume marks are over here. You have one fourth, one third, all the way to four cups. This is very nice. I love this. And it's super light. Akala ko mabigat siya. The problem with electronic things like this, you have to be meticulous about cleaning it. And number two, you have to be very careful about storing it. We go to the bowls. I received a comment in episode zero. Somebody asked me where I bought my bowls. I have several kinds of bowls over here. I have over here three kinds. So I have here the basic stainless steel one. I have it in two sizes. I have it in large and I have it in small. The smaller one is 16 centimeters. I also have this. The nice thing about this, and if you can afford it and if you can find some, I highly recommend buying something like this because of the rubber bottom. So even if you're mixing it, it doesn't really move a lot compared to the one without the rubber bottom. The rubber bottom gives a little bit of traction from the bottom of the pan towards your table. Scientific. Recently, I also bought these bowls from Rafski. We have two sizes. We have the smaller ones, which are 45 pesos each, and the larger ones, which are 55 pesos each. You might ask me why I have so many bowls when I am not even baking for selling yet. And you will see this in my future videos. What I like to do when I'm doing Miss and Plus is laying out all my ingredients in different bowls. So for example, all the flour will be in this bowl. I have another bowl with all the sugar, and then another bowl with the butter, another bowl with the eggs. And I also like to have an extra bowl. You can put it in the corner of where you're working. Usually I put it somewhere over there out of the frame. I think I got this or I learned this from Rachel Ray. She calls it her garbage bowl. And I saw this in many other baking and cooking videos as well. This is where they put all their trash. While they're working in their workspace, they don't have to go back and forth to the garbage can to throw stuff. This is where they put the packaging of the butter that you have already used up, eggshells. You can actually have two, one for non-biodegradable, one for biodegradable. This is also very helpful if, for example, you're preparing a lot of vegetables and there's a lot of scraps, you put it in just one bowl. It's one of the tips that I could give you when you're baking to make your workspace cleaner aside from laying down the newspaper or the manila paper on the table before you put anything on it. Clean as you go kayo para hindi nagpa-pile up yung mga bagay-bagay. I'd like to show you my strainers. Most of the flour that you can buy nowadays, especially if you're buying it from the supermarket or baking supply stores, it's labeled as sifted. Personally, I prefer sifting it again, just to be sure. But you don't really have to do that anymore if you do not have a sifter or a strainer and if the flour is labeled as being already pre-sifted. I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos. The point of sifting flour and your other dry ingredients is to make sure that there are no impurities and there are no clumps. Sifting just makes it, mixing it easier and it gives a bit of lightness to your dough or your butter. I have two types of strainer here. This one is the usual type of strainer that you have in your kitchens. Sakto lang din siya doon sa aking small bowl. I saw this at Trafskis. These are round strainers made of stainless steel. To be honest with you guys, I'd prefer if all my kitchen stuff are stainless steel because they are just more durable, easier to clean, and easier than to spot if it's not clean enough. This is 500 pesos, but this is a set of five strainers. These are all different sizes. You have to be careful about storing and cleaning stuff with mesh because it's so tedious to clean it. Madalik din siyang masira. So the smallest one is just sakto with my smallest bowl. And the largest one, when you're sifting, you have to be very careful. These are just perfectly fit 
for my bowls but what I actually prefer is using a smaller size I'll show you why I prefer sifters or strainers that are a little bit smaller than the bowl because if your sifter or your strainer is just sakto or same size with your bowl what's gonna happen when you're gonna strain is it tends to move or mag spill siya on the sides but if it's smaller like this when you pour the ingredient, everything goes directly into the bowl. It's the same with the smaller ones. It might be a bit of a hassle because it goes deep into the bowl, but that's better than everything spilling out of it. For most people, this one, this type of strainer would be the safest. Although if you're using a larger bowl like this, you need a larger strainer because Look at that. That will easily fall off and you can only sift through a very small part which is not efficient. Matatagalan po kayo. Now let's go to the mixing tools. We have several over here but there are two major ones. This is our spatula or it's also called a scraper and these are our whisks. You might be asking me why I have three different sizes. The large one, na bilito kasi, I told the errand boy to buy me a smaller one and a larger one. He said, there's only a large one. Ito yun. Although, okay lang naman kasi may malaki naman tayong bowl. If for this one, the medium one, this is 14 inches. This is just sakto. You can use this for the larger bowls and the smaller bowls. But we also have an even smaller one which is more comfortable when you are whisking just one egg, two eggs, little amounts. You don't need to have small, medium, large. You just have to have one medium one. This is what I would suggest because for the smaller one, you can substitute a fork. You can also substitute a fork for the medium one. But again, if you can afford it, if it is accessible to you, you can find a good quality one. Then go buy yourself a medium. Stainless steel ones are the best. I have cutesy ones with plastic coating from Daiso. Those are nice and it's cheap also. So if you just bake occasionally, pwede naman, yun na lang yung bilhin mo. I have five different spatulas. Two are rubber made. Aside from the different sizes, I also like to buy different shapes. This one is actually my favorite because it's two sides. It's not 100% sure, but I think I bought this from Bake World many years ago. So why do I have to have a small one? For example, you're using this. This is um, La Chaflan Llanera. If you have a large spatula, it's very difficult to navigate. But if you have a small one like this, which is relatively flatter than this one. Now, these are practically the same size, diba? But this one has a smaller surface area, easier to navigate. So this one is my favorite because it has two sides. It's small, it's handy, and it's easy to clean because you can easily disassemble it and clean its separate parts. I also have a large one, of course. You've seen this in episode zero while I was mixing the cookie dough. What I also like about these rubber-made scrapers or spatulas is it has a clean rest. It has that groove over here. If you're working, you can just rest it like so. Compared to this one, Na walang clean rest, it can slip off easily. Look. This one, I think Bake World also. This one, definitely Bake World. The pink one, I got this from a bazaar in Manila. There are spatulas na mura, 88 pesos lang, from Daiso. I do not have a mixer. I do have a hand mixer, but I checked it that just now. Missing yung kanyang thing. So I do have to buy one. Nagastos na naman po tayo mga kaibigan! I don't have a stand mixer but that's one of my goals. Before my birthday next year, I have to have a stand mixer already. That's my goal. But we're not done with spatulas because I have even more spatulas. I actually have more na nakatago pero hindi ko na ipapakita. But I have to show you four more. These are called spatulas as well. This is a straight spatula and this is what we call an offset or an angled spatula. Usually, itong mga ganitong spatula, you use it for icing or frosting cakes. But, marami din tong uses. For example, in my episode zero, I keep my cookie dough balls in containers like this. In that video, since I didn't have my offset spatula, I used the spoon to take it out from the container. But if you have an offset spatula like this, you can easily remove it from the container or lift it from the container. 
you can also use this for serving cake, cheesecake, stuff like this. There are many other functions of a spatula. You don't really need to have a lot in different sizes, but I just prefer having different sizes and different types, you know, just in case. Of course, the straight ones are cheaper than the angled or offset ones. The cheapest is 70 pesos and this is 4 inches. I got this from Rafsky. The 5 inch offset or angled one, it's 120 pesos. The large one is 8 inches, it on a straight. This is 110 pesos. And this is 9 inches angled or offset 170 pesos. One thing that you haven't seen me use but I will definitely be using in the future are rolling pins. This is not actually a dough rolling pin. This is a fondant rolling pin. I bought this because I don't really make bread but I wanted to have one so I got a small one that's easy to store. I have recently bought a larger one. This is from Rafsky. They showed me two types. One is wood and this one is stainless. I like this one because it has measurements. I don't know if you can see it. If you're just baking small quantities, you can definitely buy a fondant rolling pin or you can use a wine bottle. Some people prefer the wooden rolling pin. I don't like wooden rolling pins because ang hirap din yun. You have to be very meticulous about storing it kasi syempre, di ba, ayaw nyo magka-molds, ayaw nyo masira agad. Another thing which you haven't seen me use is these ones chopping board and knives and scissors even if you don't bake you always have to have kitchen shears I have here my chopping board we definitely have a lot of chopping boards in this house because a lot of people cook in this house but I have one dedicated for baking this is only used for butter sometimes cheese some chocolates and nuts I'd like to show you here my two knives I bought this from Lazada these are from the brand Slick people ask how many knives do you actually need I would suggest buying at least two so one is a chef's knife something like this I chose this size to show you because this one is the best size that's comfortable for me to use in chopping stuff I'm also showing you this smaller one which is a paring knife we use this to peel small fruits chef's knife paring knife that's all you really need but if you can afford and you have access to more knives better we have here a tool that you have already seen me use which is an ice cream scooper which I use to form my cookie dough balls. And now we have here, it's labeled as barbecue brush but these are actually multi-purpose brushes or pastry brushes. So these are two sizes, this is a set. Most of the time, I use this to brush on <laughs> butter or mga glaze. And another thing that not a lot of people use but I'm so fond of using is this this type of scraper or dough scraper. Not just for cookies guys but if you're doing bread and you want to lift the dough. Well, imagine nyo na lang may bread dough. Ganern. So, you use this one. They have a condiment or a squeeze bottle. Now, what do I plan to put in here? Vegetable oil or olive oil so that it's easier to squeeze out. So you're gonna see more of these containers, more Tupperware. Again, guys, I'm not sponsored by Tupperware, but my aunts store their flour, their sugar, almost everything in Tupperware. And I saw that it's durable, so I bought some Tupperware stuff. Para dun ko din store yung aking mga flour, sugar, and the other ingredients. And also, I was so happy I found this because this is the perfect size for me to store my cookie balls when I chill them in the fridge. We're almost done, guys! Konti na lang. We have here different types of pans. There are different cake pans. The round ones, square ones, brownie pans, rectangular pans. These are the ones that I have right now because these are the ones that I can see myself using in the next few weeks. This is the Leche Flan Lionera. There are larger sizes, pero ito lang kasi yung available. And then this one is a loaf pan. There was one piece left and I really wanted the loaf pan, so I got it. I was so happy because these were the cookie sheets that the errand boy bought. These are just the right size. Actually, pwede pang bigger mag-fit sa aming oven. Pero, sakto lang to to fit six cookies. And then, of course, I line this with my silpat. It just makes the clean-up easier. Or not actually silpat brand. Lang. Silicon mats. I have here my 12-cup muffin pan. Bought the gold one kasi they're pretty. This is my favorite brand. Ever since I started buying bakeware from Lazada, sleek talaga yung brand na binibili ko because it's heavy duty. Hindi siya nasisira agad. You can use this for baking muffins, cupcakes, cookie cups, 
You can also cook your eggs over here. We will be experimenting a lot with this. Also bought this cookie sheet. This is the perfect size actually for my oven. This one I probably won't use for cookies. I will probably use this for cooking savory stuff. Or dito ko ilalagay yung lianera when I cook my leche flan. Everybody has to have a cookie sheet na medyo deep. This is the most versatile one that you can have. Kasi you can cook chicken, you can cook meat, you can cook vegetables, you can cook pastries also. You can use it for a lot of things. You have to have these oven mitts. I cannot stress enough the importance of being safe in the kitchen and being dressed and geared properly. So these are the ones that you see me using in my recent vlogs. But before, these are the mitts that I used. These are also silicone. If hindi ka masyadong bihasa, this might be difficult for you kasi matakot ka na masunog yung some parts of your hand. But if you're already used to baking and putting things inside and getting things outside of the oven, then this is something that I would recommend for you. These ones are super tagal na sa akin. I got this from Lazada. I also have my cooling rack. I prefer these stainless steel ones are what I really like. But for some reason, these black ones are what's available right now. I have one na one layer and this one na three layers na stacking. It will save you space and it's also easier to store because you can just fold it like so and put it back in its box. Let's go to the consumables. I have here beeswax. I've shown this in my episode 0. I got this from Beeswax Wraps Filipinas. It has a Star Wars print. Tada! Ang cute, diba? So it comes with instructions on how to clean it and store it and everything. It usually comes as a set, small, medium, large, all-purpose kitchen cloth, colored kitchen cloth that you can use to wipe, dry, clean, and polish your professional kitchen. These are available in different colors. This one is specifically green, so it's suitable for the workplace. It reduces cross-contamination, it's heavy-duty, and yes, it's definitely reusable. So I'll show you one. So ito yun siya, guys. So from now on, you will see me using this. Lalagay ko yan dito sa aking towel holder. O, oh, ba? This is my electric oven. I chose electric because I didn't want the hassle and the fear of learning how to operate a gas range. Although that I heard is better talaga when it comes to conducing heat and controlling heat. But anyway, it has four hot plates on top. This is, by the way, La Germania brand. I chose La Germania because this is also the brand that my aunts use. So, matagal-tagal na tong brand na to. You can't use both the hot plate and the oven at the same time. If you're using the hot plate, you turn the knob here. And if you're gonna use the oven, turn the knob over there. And this is the control for the oven. And these are the controls for the hot plates. This is the oven. I have an oven thermometer inside. Everybody should have an oven thermometer. And those are the roasting stuff which I usually take out. There are two racks. One wire rack and then another one. I don't know what it it's called, I think, roasting rack yata ang tawag dito. There are three slots, lowest, middle, and then you can also put something in this slot. That's my La Germania oven. I got this from Abenson at Abriza Ayala Mall. They were very helpful. I bought this two years ago, 2018 if I'm not mistaken. I think the really basic ones that you have to have are of course the cookie sheet, at least one cookie sheet, at least one muffin pan if you plan to make cupcakes. You can even use this for ansaymada, cheese bread, stuff like those. Mixing bowl. You can actually use whatever bowl you already have in the house. The stainless ones are the best pa rin kasi ang dali niya talagang linisin. And then of course, you have to have at least one spatula, one whisk, and that's that. Mixing bowl, spatula, whisk, pan. That's the most important ones, I guess. Of course, you have to have your measuring cups and measuring spoons. Otherwise, you can make bake because baking is a precise thing that really have to measure everything. If you have any questions about any of these tools or you feel like I didn't explain it properly or you want to correct something that I said, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I am very much open to um, suggestions. I hope you learned something from this first official episode of Baking 101 that's all about baking tools and equipment. I'm very happy that I redid this entire episode because I feel like I was able to deliver better this time than the first time that I did this. Again, I'd like to say thank you to Aprons Davao for catering to my order. 
And I'd also like to acknowledge all the baking supply stores here in Davao. They're open despite the difficulty in doing business during this time. So number one is Bake World, that's my suke. And then of course, Baking Pantry, they're open in both downtown and also in their Lanang branch. Monster Kitchen is also open, although I haven't purchased anything from them lately. Baker's Basket is also open. And of course, Rafsky here in Obrero just a few steps away from my house. I'm super happy. Three floors of baking supplies. Baking tools, baking ingredients, and even cooking ingredients, guys, they have over there. Guys, stay healthy, be safe. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys tuning in even if I think this is gonna be a long, long video. I hope you learned something. That's my goal in this uh, Baking 101 series. The next video is going to be all about the basic baking ingredients. I'm also gonna reshoot that but here's a little bit of teaser. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you the basic baking ingredients that I usually use. Of course, we start with the flour. I would recommend unsalted butter to just make the sodium content easier to control. So we have the white sugar and the brown sugar. I hope you're excited for episode 2. I think it's coming out in about 2 weeks. I'm really gonna try to have a video out every 2 weeks. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and click on the notification bell button. I will also be giving you more recipes, not just baking recipes but also savory recipes so mga ulam you know meatless mandiri recipes and of course my travel videos and my other types of vlogs will also be released in the same channel give me a thumbs up if you like this video share this with your friends leave a comment down below read my blog because most of the important stuff will be on my blog cucinamaria.com and of course some of the info and important links will also be in the description box below so don't forget to read that as well. Follow me on social media. Leave your questions. Give me suggestions. I'm very open to all of them. Thank you guys for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.